grab yourself a glass of wine. If you're not going out this Friday night, put on your pajamas. Go do that now before we get into all of these questions. Um, and just get ready to have a fun, chill time. What's up, everybody? I really should have gone pee before I started recording this, but here I am both on YouTube and on Instagram Live. I told you guys I was gonna start an Instagram Live video tonight at 8 p.m. I only gave you an hour's notice, but here we are. And we are here today because we are filming a live Q&A with questions that I had you guys send me in. And uh, what I want to get out of this Q&A is really just an opportunity for us to have an intimate conversation, a deep conversation, um, the intimacy, the connection, the relationship building. That's what I want to get out of this conversation. So if you don't have any plans on this Friday night, here's what you got to do. You got to grab yourself a glass of wine, which turned out to be like two or three glasses of wine while we sit here and have a conversation and get to know each other one-on-one -on -one and um, get to answering some of these questions. I thought it would be fun to also get some inspiration as to what are some deep questions that people don't usually talk about always or that are kind of hard to talk about sometimes so that we can, we can discuss them here and this can be a safe place for us to talk because one of the things I really want on my channel is for this to be a safe place to talk about the things that are normally hard to talk about and the things that are normally hard to talk about um, are usually things that are very personal and deep. Hi Ian! Things that often cause us some embarrassment or stress or things of that nature and I find that a lot of the things we see on social platforms today are very superficial and they're not deep and they don't address the core issue of things but rather a superficial image of things and I'm not saying that for everything but I am saying that people don't always address core issues of things that we're all truly feeling so we're going to be talking about anything from stress to relationships to money, finances, um, friendships, sex, veganism, health, wellness, whatever it is, but it's not strictly related to veganism because I'm a full believer that you need to have balance in every area of your life to continue to thrive and you need to continuously work on one of these areas of your life. That being said, we're going to hop right into questions and I'm super excited to hop into these questions for you guys and they're all over the place. What is the biggest piece of advice that you would give your younger self? Okay, so... If any of these questions resonate with you, I want you to answer them as well. This is an opportunity for deep realization and an opportunity to move forward from anything that you might be experiencing at this very time. Because the more we can self-reflect, the more we can change the way that we view the world and our outlook of the world. So what is the biggest piece of advice that you'd give your younger self? More so lately than never, than ever, not never, I have had girls and boys who are in high school, middle school, and college messaging me and telling me their concerns about growing up not fitting in when high school can be a very hard place to grow up and very clicky. I'm sure so many of you guys can relate to the fact that high school was not always the best opportunity to express who you truly were because you're in such a confined space and you didn't always feel like you belonged in a certain area. To some degree, we all felt that. So the best advice I would give my younger self is that that is a temporary environment that you're in. When you get into the real, the real world, there are so many other opportunities that present themselves to you if your heart and your mind are open to them. High school, you know, I can only speak from my personal experience in high school, but it was not fun there was always that clickiness there was always that we're gonna hang out with these people you're gonna hang out with those people but these two people shouldn't like collide there was always those groups and even if they coexisted at times what I generally found is that people were always left hiding their true emotions and they weren't able to express how they really feel and that shit sucks and let me tell you why because the emotions you feel early on in life they will reside inside of you 
as time goes on and they will be inside of you not knowing how to release himself because when you're young, you don't always have the most effective ways of dealing with trauma and dealing with pain. So that being said, you result to the things that you think are going to help you solve these problems. In my case, when I was at a very low point in my life, I was... I unfortunately resulted to having an eating disorder because in my mind I was thinking I will have more friends if I look a certain way and my actions enforced that. So nothing I did was coming out of a place of hate. It was all coming out of a place of love. When I developed my eating disorder, it was because I genuinely wanted to look good so that I could feel good about myself so I didn't know that I was hurting myself in the process until many years later. Who you are in high school I believe is sometimes limited based on who you meet and what you know but there's so much more opportunity as time progresses for that. So I'm going to read some of these little comments real quick. Oh my god I love Laura so much. You are the only person who you need love from. If you're not your own best friend Who else is going to love you in the same way that you need if you can't love yourself in that exact way? And even if that sounds kind of foo-foo right now, it is 100% true. Hi, Brie. Hi, sis. You know, your girl needs her supporters. I see a lot of booty popping, and don't get me wrong, butts are nice, and I wish I could take a picture like that, but your girl can't always. So we all need to be able to express our feelings. So this is a safe place to do that. My... My Instagram page and my YouTube channel will always be the place that you can express yourself entirely. And if you need some extra support, let me know down below. How do you learn to love yourself so much and not worry about what people think about you? I'm struggling with that right now. So before I answer this question, I want to know what do you guys think? What do you guys think is the answer to this question? And what makes you feel empowered and good? Because I find that on days that we think that we look our best or we feel lean, it's always a physical attribute that makes, that triggers the way we mentally feel about ourselves. So I guess that somehow my camera stopped recording, which is weird because it didn't die. But I want to catch you up with what I was talking about a little bit. So... What I was saying in terms of this question was that we are always trying to find ways to solidify why what the things that we believe about ourselves are true. So if I have this belief about myself um, that I'm not good enough for whatever reason, I'm always going to be subconsciously looking for reasons to back up why that's not true. And the example I was giving was about smoking e-cigarettes. And you'll see what I mean when you hear the remainder of this video about talking about how no matter how many times people told me it was bad I always every time I heard one little thing that supported why it was not bad that's the one that I would feed my brain with and and believe it um so I talk a little bit about that in there as well so yeah I'm just gonna like fast forward it when I started I kind I knew in my heart that it was bad for me, but I didn't want to believe it. So naturally, I'm when I ever looked it up is is smoking e-cigs bad for you? You're going to resonate with the posts that solidify why what you believe is true. So every time there was a post that said, "Oh, it's not that bad for you." I was like, "Yeah, that's right. It's not bad for you." You're only going to believe what you choose to believe. You're going to cherry pick the truth and facts to fit what your current belief system is. Same thing goes for the way that you view yourself and self-love. If there's a reason you don't love yourself or feel that confidently about yourself, if you feel badly about yourself, you are always going to nitpick why that's not true. So if I don't love myself, and you know if you do or not, you really do, and you look in the mirror, You're going to naturally gravitate towards seeking reasons why you don't love yourself. You're going to nitpick the things that are wrong with you. You are going to naturally pick out the things about your body that you feel are wrong with you. And it's just going to continuously solidify why that is true. So the first step to that is changing the perception that you have about yourself. Easier said than done, right? Okay, so how do we do that? One, download my ebook. It's free. It's on my website. The link is in my bio. Two, you need to change the words that you say in your head. 
yeah, it sounds cheesy. It sounds like something we all should be able to do. But the fact of the matter is, is that you're not alone if you don't feel confidently in your skin or you don't love yourself. You're not alone. You shouldn't feel weird because it is something every woman that I've ever met has gone through and men too. Um, I know that primarily my followers on Instagram are women, but I know that men go through that too. So here's what I mean by that. Take out a piece of paper, write down 10 things that you value about yourself. I remember when I did this, I was like, oh, I don't value 10 things about myself. But then I, I, I made myself sit there and think and I started writing down what I value about myself. And then there would be times when I would think of something and then I would be like, wait, I can't write that. I don't actually value that about myself. Like, it's not that good. You need to shut down that part of your brain that's saying that. That immediate response you get to whatever it is you're thinking, that is not you talking. That is something that's been conditioned into you and you have been made to believe that from another source. Maybe it was because of a traumatic childhood experience or maybe somebody said that to you and it lingered in your mind. You need to ignore that voice and you need to really listen to your true soul and your true essence and figure out what you actually value about yourself. Even if it's not physical, it could be, I have an amazing personality. Yes, it's hard, especially when we all come up from a place of judging ourselves in one form or another, one form or another, or trying to be good enough. So you need to work on your mindset and you need to start putting these things into actions because a lot of people say fake it till you make it. But the reason they say that is because, again, we are always trying to, our brains are always trying to back up what we believe about ourselves. So if we start to train our brain to believe that we are beautiful, we are going to be looking for reasons to feel that we are beautiful. If I look in the mirror and I'm trying to work on my self-love and feel that I'm beautiful, then eventually my brain will immediately be seeking those reasons to back up my belief. And if my belief is that I'm beautiful, I will be seeking reasons to believe that I'm beautiful. I know that was a very long explanation, but Sadie, please, if you're here, tell me if that helped you at all. And if you need some further help or guidance, then I would love to tell you more about what I did when I was in the recovery stages of my eating disorder and what I did to just love myself more and feel better about myself. So I'm going to move through these questions a little bit faster because I really have to pee, <laughs> but I'll be on here for like another 10, 15 minutes. Someone asked if I look like Carrie Russell. I had no idea who that was and I looked it up and I was like, no, I don't at all. You guys think so? Okay. <sighs> the most beneficial thing about being vegan. Oh wait, 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 I actually wanna read this real quick. Sadie responded, it did. That was amazing. I'd love to know what you did to love yourself, but we can definitely talk about that through message if you want. Yeah, so I'll message you Sadie, I would love to. I would love to talk about that because it, it, it's something that I'm so passionate about, especially coming from a place of such low self-esteem and hating myself. And the worst part was is that nobody knew. And that's the hard part is that people don't usually know when you hate yourself or you're not feeling confident in your body because you don't – it's not something you can see. You don't actively – see that kind of thing so it's something that goes on in your head and when people don't know you're slowly being eaten away at and eaten away at and eaten away that because people in school don't talk about it they really don't so I, I didn't realize how messed up I was throughout the entirety of my high school experience until I came to the I don't know why I keep doing this until I came to the conclusion that high school they didn't teach me a single thing about how to grow up independent and strong and how to stand up to bullies and how to fight for what I know is right. And that's probably why I was just, I always felt like an outcast. And, you know, I wish that I could go back today with the mentality that I have now and just own it because I would because I can confidently say that I don't care what anybody has to say about me. Unless it's like constructive criticism, then I'll take it to heart and I'll try and do better. But <laughs> I really don't care. <sighs> Someone said, what is the best way to have sex? So that's very personal and individualized to the person. But I don't think you're going to figure out that answer until you have a conversation with whoever your partner is about that. And 
the conversation aspect can often be the hardest one but if you think about it it's just one conversation and you're done because you know I've struggled with this a lot too in that we assume people are mind readers and they're not even if we're being incredibly obvious with the things that we think we're expressing don't don't ever do that. I'm working on it myself, but people never know what you're thinking. Ever, ever, ever. Maybe if it's your best friend. not Maybe your mom, but not usually. So you need to, anything that you're feeling, you need to express it when it becomes apparent to you that this is an issue. And even if it's not an issue, but this is something that I would like to improve on and this is something that I would like to do. That being said, this is going to take a little bit of practice. But another thing you can do is plan plan a day of discovery. So we get busy, caught up in our day-to-day -day lives, but if you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, husband, wife, whatever, and you're trying to wonder when you can fit in time to just have like one-on-one -on -one time, then, then schedule it, whether that be a date, whether that be just like being together and doing like massages, whatever that is, that could be something that is up your alley because here's the thing with that. Even though you think it should come intuitively to you, it doesn't because there are so many other things going on in our life that stress us out and we're always thinking about different things that that doesn't always that's not always the first thing that registers in our mind so by having a plan a schedule then you're you naturally have something to think about as the days progress and especially as that day comes and you have something to look forward to and then you can start to you know bounce ideas off each other and be like ooh, like what do you want to do tonight do you want to go out to dinner do you want to make dinner together do you want to like watch porn together like whatever it is that makes you feel and I can go into more detail about this if anybody specifically wants to know more about um that area of their life let me know but some small things you can do is just to prepare yourself for it for that conversation and for the actual act of intimacy again whether that being like sex or a massage or a <sighs> deep conversation deep spiritual enlightening conversation so so again I had to chime in because I guess that my camera just didn't record the rest of the Q&A which really makes me sad because there was a couple other questions that I really wanted to have on video so you guys could hear the answers but I am gonna have to just make a part two and have the Instagram fam ask me ask me some more questions so I can get out some of the um, some other ones that I had that I didn't even get to in the Q&A so that being said I hope that you got a good insight based on the questions that were answered in this video and I hope that you enjoyed them and if you did let me know which one you learned the most from because I really got into answering them and um, other than that destroy that like button comment and subscribe. Oh, and follow me on Instagram too so you can ask me any questions that are on your mind. So that's at EdenGold underscore. Um, and yeah, next week's video, last update, is going to be on combating cravings. So my last one was about causes of cravings and I got some feedback for one on combating those cravings. So I'm going to do that next. Alright guys.